So this is part one of the weather station lab activity. First things first, always put your name in the orange box. Then what I need you to do is read through all the information from the introduction. Please read through it, it will be helpful. Then we're gonna look at reading and interpreting the station model, the weather station model. You'll find this on page 13 of your reference table right here. So you're gonna, you can get out your reference table and look at the same time as reading this so that you don't have to keep scrolling up and down or looking back and forth. By the way, if you would like to and it is helpful, click on control at the same time as the parentheses on your Chromebook and it will split your screen. So you can watch the Edpuzzle at the same time as doing your lab, which is very, very helpful. So you can pause when needed. All right, so the first thing you're gonna notice in the station model is we've got temperature and dew point. So you've got temperature right here, dew point right here. Remember, we already looked these up, but on here, it's in Celsius. Keep that in mind because on page 13 above your weather station, you can convert those temperatures. Next thing you're gonna see is the present weather, which is pointed right here. You have a bunch of different symbols, which mean a bunch of different things. The symbol tells you what weather it is. Um, <clears throat> if there is no symbol, that means there's clear, there's nothing going on. Visibility, that's right next to the, um, the present weather. If there is no problem with visibility, it'll be like 100%, it's like awesome, it's amazing. But if it's got this fraction, it just tells you the percent in, or not the percent, the fraction in miles, how far you can see. That's a half a mile right there. That's how far you can see in front of you. And then you have precipitation. Now there's all this precipitation is down kind of kitty corner from it to the bottom. And it gives you the inches in the last six hours. So it's always gonna be a decimal point involved with it. It could be 1.25 or something like that. It's all in inches, the past six hours. Wind speed. So this is where you're gonna have what looks like a stick and it's a feather. I did show a couple of these on the wind, uh, in the wind lesson. So the stick with the feathers, the direction, that's where the stick is pointing from, tells you where the weather is coming from. So if you've ever heard a newscast or a news um, weatherman say the wind is coming from the southwest. So what means is the stick is gonna be in the southwest quadrant of um the the direction the rose compass compass rose sorry compass rose so what i would suggest you do is have like a mini compass rose set next to you never eat soggy waffles don't forget that this is in the southwest and then you're going to see these little feathers off of it a whole feather is worth 10 knots and a half a feather is worth five knots so there's a whole and there's a half. Remember, if you have two holes, they have to be the same length. If they are not, and one is smaller than the other, it could be misinterpreted as a five knot feather. So make sure they are always the same length. Cloud coverage, that's inside. Right here, it gives you the percentages. This is 0%. 10%, 25%, 40%, 50% covered by uh, clouds, 60, 75, 90, 100. An obstructed view, like if you have like a building in front of you and you couldn't see, kind of obstructed, or if you have um, a tent over you and you couldn't see. Next you have is air pressure. This is where that encoding and decoding came into, um, into the lesson last year last Tuesday. So right here is your barometric pressure. Remember, it gives you the three digit code. You have to decode that, which means you're going to either add the nine or the 10, depending on what number is uh, the first of the three numbers. 
and make sure you put a decimal in between the last two numbers. So if it is under five, you're gonna put a 10. If it's just like this, this is under five, so I put a 10 in front and there's that decimal behind it. If it is above five, five or above, you're gonna put a nine in front of it and put a decimal between the last two. So there's 588, eight. it'll be 958 decimal eight. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is this thing called a barometric trend. So there's a couple things to it. You are going to first, if there's a plus, it was increasing, a minus is decreasing, and that's over the last three hours. So when you see this um, forward slash, it means that it is, it was rising for the last three hours. If you have a negative or a backslash, it is currently falling or was falling over the last three hours. And the number that uh, represents the last two digits of the pressure, AKA like these two numbers right there, which means because you notice this does not have a decimal in between, all you gotta do is put a decimal and you have to add or subtract depending on if it's increasing or decreasing. Okay, so the first things first, you are going to um, decode some of these stations. So first, um, for station two, let's look at station one. I'm gonna walk through station one with you. You're gonna be able to do two, three, four, and five after. So station one, it wants the temperature. Temperature is always up in the corner. Like I said, keep this with you. It, it, it'll help you to figure out what's what. So I'd put 65 here. Barometric pressure, 998. So I'm gonna take that 998 and I'm gonna add a nine in front of it because remember it's above five. And then I'm gonna put a decimal between the last two spots and it'll give me 999.8. Now you don't have to put all of that in there but it helps me to see where your where your thinking's at if you do. Barometric trend. So it's got negative 30. So the negative 30 goes to negative 3.0. So I'm gonna put a barometric trend of 3.0. Precipitation, you've got the equal signs. Um, if you look on this, it'll tell you the equal sign equals fog, so I'm going to write the fog. Now it wants uh, wind direction, so I'm looking at the stick. It is pointing straight down or south, so I'm going to put south. What's my wind speed? Notice the feathers, these two are the same length, so that's 10 and 10 and 5, that's 25 knots. I know it doesn't say knots, um, here, so you don't have to write it down units wise. And then percent coverage by the sky. It's totally covered, so I'm gonna put 100%. So you're gonna fill out station two, three, four, and five. Next, you're gonna have this one, where it gives you all the information that you just got from the last one, but now you're going to have to add it yourself. How to do that is you double click on it. So this one, I would um, get a, get your phone, or something where you can take a snapshot or write all the information down. You're gonna double click and you're going to add stuff. You can draw, add with, add a stick, something like that. You can type, you can add text, like that. And you're gonna save and close and that's gonna be done. This is a big part of it, do not skip it. If you need help, let me know. I'll walk it through with you. So the first one is, it gives you the temperature of 69, so I would put 69 at the top. Dew point of 58, if you can't remember where dew point is, it's on the lower side underneath temperature, so I'd put it under that. Wind direction, southwest, I know I'm going to put a stick down this way. Speed is 16, so I'm going to do roughly 15, so one long, one short. Air pressure is 10, 16.9. So I get rid of the 10, get rid of the decimal, put one, six, nine. Sky is 50%, so I'm gonna color half of it to the best of your ability. Does not have to be perfect. 
Present weather is none, so I don't have to put anything there. All right? And the last but not least, you are going to do some conversions. Um, you are going to convert the, cel um, the temperature in Rochester into Celsius. So you'll find Fahrenheit, wherever 69 is, and go over to Celsius and write that down. What is the pressure at Albany? So it gives you this as your air pressure in um, millibars. You need to convert from millibars to inches. We did this in the conversion before. Last but not least, what is the temperature in Kelvin at Binghamton? So Binghamton, you're going to take the temperature in Fahrenheit, and you're going to go across to Kelvin. This is part one. Let me know if you have any issues. I'll talk to you later.